Hello, this is Ms. Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss characteristics of gases. This is the first part of a two-part lecture. So today's essential question, what are some characteristics of gases? Before we start talking specifically about gases, let's talk about the three states of matter and how they differ. So um, the three states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. There's also plasma. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to stick with solid, liquid, and gas. Okay, solids. Shape and size is not dependent on the container the solid is in, which means that uh, solids have both a fixed shape and a fixed volume. Um, so if I were to take some sort of solid, let's say an ice cube, we'll use water, because it can be in all three states of matter. So if I take an ice cube and I put it in a cup, it's still ice cube shape. It's still ice cube size. I take it out of the cup, lay it on the table. It's still ice cube shape and ice cube size. So the, the um, shape and volume are not dependent on the container the solid is in. Um, and this is because particles of a solid are closely packed and held together tightly. So they have a rigid structure, okay? The, the atoms that make up, the atoms and molecules that make up the solid, in this case ice, um, are not free to move. Okay, state of matter number two is liquid. Liquids are slightly different than solids in that the shape of a liquid is dependent on the container the liquid is in, but the size or the volume of the liquid is not, okay? which means that liquids have a fixed volume, but a variable shape. Okay, the volume is amount of space something takes up, how, how much of it there is. Okay, so you can't change the volume of a liquid, but you can change the shape. So if we now use, as our example, water, water in a cup, say I have exactly one cup of water in a cup. Well, then I have a cup of water that's cup shaped. If I take that water and dump it out on the table, I still have a cup of water, but it's no longer cup shape, it's now table shape. So the amount or volume of water remains the same, but the shape is variable. It, the, the shape of the liquid takes is the shape of the container it's in. Okay, and this is because particles of a liquid are in contact with each other, but they do have some re, um, freedom to move. Um, so they have what we call a fluid structure, and they can take on the shape of its container. All right, and the third state of matter is the gas. Gases are very different than both solids and liquid um, because both the shape and the size are dependent on the container the gas is in, okay? Which means gases have a variable shape and a variable volume. Okay, so what that means is that if I had a sealed cup, I had a cup filled with gas, um, let's say steam, liquid water, or uh, gaseous water, and I put a lid on it, that the steam particles, the water particles would be bouncing around, like in this picture here, filling up the entire cup, and they would be cup-shaped. If I then opened up the lid on that cup, the steam would then or the, 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 the water in the gas form would then come out of the cup and bounce around and take up all of the space in my house or in my classroom or wherever I may be. So gases can change their volume, the amount of space they take up. In fact, gases will take up as much volume or as much, much space as you give them. And they can change their shape. They take up whatever shape of container they're in. And this is because the particles of a gas are not in contact with each other, so they can move freely. So they take the shape of the container they are in. Um, gas particles don't actually really like to be close to each other, so they're going to move, they're going to spread out as far away from each other as they possibly can, um, taking up as much room as they possibly can. Okay, we're now going to talk about a few characteristics of gases now that we know kind of how their molecules move. All right, so first thing is that gases are fluids. Um, now, fluids don't mean liquids, 
Fluids mean something that flows, and both gases and liquids are fluids because they flow. So, gases flow like liquids. They exert pressure equally in all directions on the container. Um, this is because the gas molecules, remember, they, they're not connected, so they keep moving around. They're bouncing off the walls and off the floor and off the ceiling and just bouncing, bouncing. So they're going to be pushing equally in all directions. Um, gas molecules are in constant mo motion. They're really, really hyper, um, and there's nothing holding them down, so they just move. Um, so they collide or bump into each other all the time. These collisions are elastic. Now, what an elastic collision means is it means that it'll bounce off something and ricochet off with the same amount of energy, the same amount of speed. Okay, so a non-elastic collision would be like two cars smashing into each other. They bounce off each other, but they bounce off each other at a much slower speed. They have lost energy due to friction. Okay, that's a non-elastic collision. That's not what happens with, with um, gas molecules. Gas molecules slam into the wall and bounce back, go on the same speed. Think about your dream Super Bowl. If you remember a Super Bowl, you're in an empty room all the way closed, and if you could throw that ball and it bounce, 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 never stop. That would be uh, elastic collisions, um, and that would be what gas molecules do. All right, density of gases. The, the um, formula for density is mass divided by volume. So density is really looking at the relationship between how much something weighs for its, its volume, the amount of space it takes up, how big it is. Okay, so something that's very, very dense could be very small but heavy. Um, something that's not very dense could be very large but light. Okay, so gases have a lower density than either liquids or solids. And this is because gases are mostly empty space, because the gases are spread out as far as they can go. Um, that's not true of um, the molecules making up solids and liquids. Gases can be compressed, okay? They can be squished closer together. Why? Because gases are mostly empty space. Um, so you could gather those gas molecules up and squeeze them closer and closer together, um, because there's, they're far apart. If you think like about a solid like ice, it'd be really hard to squeeze ice and, and make it smaller because it's not mostly empty space. Okay, properties of gases data table. For this lecture, you need to find your data table handout. You're going you're gonna to fill out that handout, that data table, going through the lecture. Okay, so each slide in, in the, is a row in the data table, okay? So in, in each slide, you'll have an A, B, or C. We'll have it, all those informations, part A, part B, part C. Part A goes for the observed gas behavior. Part B goes for the property of the gas. Part C goes to kinetic molecular explanation. Um, once we move to a new slide, move to a new row on your data table. Okay, so here we go. Okay, start with the first row of your data table. And our first observed gas behavior is that gases can flow through pipes from one container to another. Um, you could think about, for example, filling up a helium balloon. If you've ever seen that done, they take the, the balloon and they hook it on a nozzle at the top of the tank. They open the tank and the air, the, the helium, sorry, the helium gas rushes into the balloon. It's flowing from the tank to the balloon. Now think, if there was water in there and, they were to try, and you were to try to fill up a balloon with water from a tank, if you open the, the handle, the water wouldn't come up, up high and across to the balloon. You would need to have the, you would need to have the pipe to hook the balloon to on the bottom, right? And that's because gases take up all of the space they possibly can. So there's ga part of that helium gas is all the way at the top of the tank. Okay, so the property of the gas that explains that behavior that gases can flow through pipes is that gases are fluids. That comes up from the previous lecture. Okay, and then the kinetic molecular explanation is why, if we talk about 
kinetic, the movement of molecules, kinetic molecular explanation, the molecule movement. Um, why do gases flow through pipes? Because gas particles are not held in rigid positions like particles of a solid or a liquid. Okay, on to the second big row in your data table. Um, the observed gas behavior here is that the mass or the weight of a gas is much lower than the same volume, the same size, of a solid or liquid. Um, the property of a ga gas that explains this is that gases are much less dense than solids or liquids. Why? Because the distance between gas particles is very large compared with the distance between particles of a solid or liquid. So gases are mostly empty space. So they don't weigh very much. Empty space doesn't weigh much. All right, on to the third row in your data table. Um, our observed gas behavior is that gases can be squeezed into a smaller volume. The property of the gas we talked about in the previous lecture to explain this is that gases are compressible. Kinetic, kinetic molecular explanation to this, molecular movement Y, it's pretty much the same as, as the one before. The distance between gas particles is very large. Thus, there's a lot of empty space, so we can smush them, smush them, smush them, smush them together um, until they're, they're touching. Once you, get to a, once you squeeze them together so close, they begin to look like a liquid. Um, that's what liquid nitrogen is, for example, or, or liquid oxygen. It's, it's oxygen gas that had been compressed in so much, been squeezed together so closely that the molecules are touching, and so they look like a liquid. However, they're not hooked together, so as soon as you give them more space, pew, they spread apart and look like a gas again. Okay, the fourth row of your data table. Um, observed gas behavior. The air in a tire um, inflates the tire all the way around. Okay, so let's a visual picture. If you ever had, a, let's use a bike tire because you can see that better than a car tire. You have a, a, a bike tire that's completely flat. Got the inner tube, it's completely flat. You start pumping it up with air. Um, what do you see? Well, what actually happens is that the air looks like, the tire looks like it's full, but when you squeeze it, you realize it's not, right? At first, I mean, because the air is filling up the whole tube at once, and you have to keep pumping and pumping and pumping until there's enough air in it to make the tire hard. Think if we were to try to fill up the tire with water instead, a liquid, not a gas. Well, what happened is the bottom of the tire, the part touching the ground would get full, but the stuff on the sides and the top would be empty, and then you'd have to keep putting more and more water in to, to fill the tire up all the way around. That's why it, it's, it's very cool with air. Air, as soon as you put a little bit of air in, just a little bit of air will take up the, will, will fill the whole entire tire. It may not have enough air in it to, to, to be, have enough pressure to hold the, the bike up, but still, the, the air molecules move around, and they're going to take up the whole tire. So the property of the gas that explains this is that gases exert pressure in all directions. Um, and the kinetic, kinetic molecular explanation, or the molecule movement explanation, is that gas particles are in constant motion. They collide with the wall of their container, exerting pressure. So they're hitting, bouncing off, hitting, bouncing off, bang, bang, bang. They're moving all over the place, and that's why they're able to fill in this case a tire, but fill any container that they are in. Okay, last row in your data table, observed gas behavior. Unlike a liquid, which puddles at the bottom of a container, a gas always fills the container that it's in. Why? The property of the gas that explains this is that gases occupy all of the space available to them. The molecular movement or kinetic kinetic molecular explanation to this. Gas particles are widely spaced. The attractive forces between gas particles are very small, meaning they don't really want to hang out next to each other, um, and they're moving around a lot. So they take up as much space as you give them. Okay, 
That's it for characteristics of gases. Have a good one.